Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino Plays. Some uh, more Ace Attorney. Turn that. Yep, the volume is good on that. Um, episode seven. I forgot to upload episode six. I recorded it the same day I recorded the last uh, or the episode before, and I was like, oh, I have totally forgotten to upload this. But we're gonna record some more now. Uh, this is episode seven. I said that. Other one was episode six. This is seven. We're on March 12, 2.52 p.m. Flight I-390 Lower Deck Cargo Hold. Let's get into it. Wow, so this is the cargo hold, huh? It's so big! This plane is a special model. It has both a super large cargo hold and ultra-luxurious first-class seating. So is this the real scene of the murder? There is certainly a high probability of that, which is why we are here, correct? Okay, let's get investigating, sir. Ooh, no investigation. Okay, we got more of these, and there certainly is one missing. Holy suitcases, Mr. Edgeworth! It's like an all-you-can-use suitcase fair! These must be all the leftover ones they couldn't sell. The ones the company is planning to dispose of after this flight is over. This paint job is really cool, don't you think? It practically screams artsy! Oh, why not purchase one then? I'm sure it will bring you much happiness. You think so? Then maybe I will. Let's see here. Twelve hundred dollars? I think I'll pass. And Miss Tenero wonders why they don't sell. You'd need two jobs just to buy one. Hmm. It definitely looks like one is missing. Hmm? What is this brittle substance I'm stepping on? It's a bunch of glass fragments? Ooh, what are those? Oh, the glass fragments from the dude's glasses. I'm a logic that shit right now. Broken glasses. Glass shards. Connect. Okay, connect. There you go. We got it. I think we can safely conclude that these fragments are from a pair of glasses. And the victim was wearing a pair of broken glasses. Exactly what I was thinking. I'm sure that the shards would match up perfectly with the remnants of his glasses' lenses. Ergo, the victim was here, just as I suspected. So you're saying... that the real scene of the crime was here, sir? Isn't that what I've been saying for a while now? Oh, is it? I didn't know that. Perhaps it's a bit early to draw that conclusion. However, I believe that the probability has just skyrocketed considerably. All that's left is to find the murder weapon. That's right, we still don't know what the murder weapon is, because it wasn't that little figurine thing. Oh, we got a regular suitcase. Hey, what's with the suitcase, pal? It's what the victim checked in, sir! So this suitcase belonged to Mr. Hicks. I don't think he'd mind if we took a closer look. There's nothing out of the ordinary in here, sir. Wait, a file? And there's a photo of Miss Von Karma in it, sir. It looks like a profile on Francisca. Ooh. Ooh, why would Mr. Hicks have had a file on her? Interesting. Uh, perhaps there's a... Uh, is there something else at play here? Uh, did he know her? Uh, does she know him? And that's why she insisted that she take up this investigation. Uh, keeping track of this many pieces of cargo must be very taxing on the cargo crew. This sure brings back memories of when I worked as a part-time mover, sir. By the look in his eyes, he's waiting for me to ask about the rest of the story. But no matter how he pours on the puppy eyes, I have no intention of doing so. Attention at all, cuz. Alright. Ah, 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 ah. Gotta get my car uh, cardio in when I can! We got more boxes over here. All sorts of boxes are piled up here. This one says flammable, and this one, it says pharmaceuticals. This one says for exorcism use only. Just what kind of operation is this airline running? Oh, we got the elevator. Ooh, I just love pushing the buttons on elevators and crosswalk signals. Here, you should give it a try, sir. Go on, push it. The elevator is currently stopped on the first floor, Detective. It can't move. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess nothing would happen if you pushed it now. Well, nothing would happen normally anyway without the special key card. Both the door to the attendance room and the elevator's control panels require a key card, which makes it impossible for a passenger to come down here. 
Impossible for a passenger to come down here. Let's talk to you. Have you noticed anything strange happening around here? No, sir! I haven't noticed a thing! I'm not sure that he meant to sound so oblivious. You arrived at the scene of the crime before Detective Gumshoe, correct? And you then immediately began to direct the investigation. It seems to me that you were already here at this airport for something besides this murder. Yes, I was. I've been following a very large and involved governmental-level international crime, but it's much too large for one person to take on alone. So it was decided that I should form a joint investigation with Interpol. Oh, so that dude is Interpol? Ooh. Interpol is involved? It's a top-secret operation, so I really can't tell you any more than I already have. Well, I'm about to present you with your own file! No, not that. Where is it? Oh no, it's just a logic thing, it's not even a... Alright, never mind. I think we have to, like, logic this together first, maybe. Alright. Logic, profile on Francisca, Interpol... Connect the dots, brother! What's going on over here? Is there something happening over here? Just something very interesting happening over here. Oh, it's not interesting anymore. Now, why would Mr. Hicks have documents profiling Francisca? Oh, I know! I bet he's a big fan of Miss Von Karma, sir! Francisca said that she had come to this airport as part of an Interpol investigation. Oh, maybe Mr. Hicks had heard she was coming here and he followed her. Detective, I think it's more likely that Mr. Hicks was, in actuality, Interpol Agent Hicks. I think Francisca has some explaining to do. <laughs> Truth behind Hicks! You came to this airport to rendezvous with the victim, didn't you? Nonsense! What are you talking about? We found a profile detailing information about you in the victim's luggage. I suppose it was prepared for him so that he could recognize you when he landed. Which makes him not Mr. Hicks, but rather Interpol Agent Hicks. Isn't that correct? I should have known you'd figure it out, Miles. But it looks like they got to him first. So you really did come here to receive an Interpol agent then? Yes. Agent Hicks was on the trail of a very large international smuggling ring. He went undercover to investigate this crime. And it was I who put him on this case. I was supposed to receive a call from him on his cell phone once he had landed. I never expected to receive a call about his murder instead. I think we now have pretty definitive evidence that Agent Hicks came down here to the cargo hold. But what was he doing down here, sir? There's nothing but luggage. Oh, I get it. Maybe he forgot something in his suitcase and came down to get it. Ow! Agent Hicks came here for a work-related reason. Of that, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure he was here to investigate the smuggling operation he was observing. Francisca, do you know exactly how he intended to pursue his investigation? No. Unfortunately, I was going to find out from him after he landed. I see. But this raises another question. A normal passenger can't access the cargo hold on their own. Agent... Agent Hicks must have identified himself to a member of the crew and entered the cargo hold with that person who let him in. Yes, and then he was murdered here. These glass fragments and his broken glasses are a testament to that. And then... The killer put Agent Hicks into one of the spare suitcases, and they entered the elevator. But while they were riding up, the plane hit that patch of turbulence. Because of the intense shaking, the suitcase popped open, and Agent Hicks's body flew out. Dude, this is not possible. At the same time, his wallet fell out of his pocket, spilling its contents everywhere. Which explains why there was money scattered all over the elevator floor. Those suitcases just don't look fat enough, man. That's all I'm saying. I think it's pretty easy to say who the culprit is at this stage. What? Really, sir? I know what you're thinking, Miles Edgeworth. But the killer can be none other than Miss Rhoda Tenero. 
Uh, it could also have been Cammy, and it could have also been the captain, but thanks. If it was a crew member, any one of them could have shown Agent Hicks to the cargo hold. What's a point to keep in mind is the key cards that allows the elevator to come down here. The only person with such high level access is Miss Rhoda Tenero. I'd say that's a pretty decisive piece of information, wouldn't you? I know what she's trying to say, but I'm not certain it's as simple as that. Hmm. All right, if it was a crew member, any one of them could have shown Agent Hicks to the cargo hold. But the point to keep in mind is the key card that allows the elevator to come down here. The only person with such high level access is Miss Rhoda Tenero. Why would such important things like the key card be entrusted to only one person? According to Kami Meal, Rhoda Tenero is in charge of most of the important stuff. Then what exactly is Miss Meal in charge of? Chatting it up with that foolish captain, apparently. She was being so foolishly foolish that I didn't want to ask what her other duties were. Gah! I understand how you feel, but whipping me just now was uncalled for. In the end, the only one who could have let Agent Hicks into the hold was Rhoda Tenero. I'd say that's a pretty decisive piece of information, wouldn't you? Decisive? Do you really think it's that strong? There is no room for doubt! All of the other evidence points to her as well! Hmm. No snappy comeback? That's as it should be. Tch. There's not a single flaw in Francisca's reasoning. However, there must be something I can work with that I can draw out of her. Okay, so we should press other stuff then. That might be true, but then it could be anyone, including Miss Meal or even the captain. Don't be a fool! A plane without a pilot in the cockpit is like... A horse without a rider! Crop in hand! Much like Scruffy over there. Hey! I can't disagree with her on that. Detective Gumshoe does always need a guiding hand. Very well, then what about the other flight attendant, Miss Meal? Ha! I thought you might ask about her. What's the point to keep in mind is the key cards that allows the elevator to come down here. But it's highly likely that the key card was stolen from Miss Tenero. It's highly likely. Is that possibility is the best you can come up with? And you call yourself a disciple of my father? Ugh. Yes, well, while I don't have any evidence, I... Be quiet, you're a disgrace. There's more evidence pointing to Miss Rhoda Tenero, you know. It's not just the key cards that gives her away. Are you talking about the murder weapon, the Mr. I Fly Piggy Bank? Yes, she is also the only person with a key to open that display case. And there is the matter of the key to the display case that held the murderous bang. Now we may present the fact that there was turbulence, which is not a piece of evidence. And as a result, I do not know. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, then we just, yeah. What do you mean it's the same thing? It's the only thing that's related to the fact that there was this. You didn't need the key to open the display case. The display case was glass. Damn. So you would allow a subordinate to take over your disgrace. Yeah, I guess that wasn't it. Oh, come on. Maybe we press this as well. Objection. But that is a fake. Stop right there, Miles Edgeworth. You don't have any proofs that this is just a red herring. If you must keep on insisting that it's a fake, then what is the real murder weapon and where did it go? Speechless, I see. That's not a surprise. After all, you know that we've searched the entire cargo hold and came up empty-handed. There must be a way. There must be something that can help me rule out the piggy bank as the murder weapon. What should be examined further to help us ascertain the authenticity of the weapon? Um, the piggy bank. 
We should examine the bank itself once more to determine if it is real. To determine if it is the real murder weapon. If this is the real weapon, it should be damaged or perhaps have a dent on it somewhere. We've looked into that already and there is no sign of anything on it. But we can't discount it as a murder weapon on that one fact alone. The piggy bank is, after all, made of a stronger materials than human flesh. Yeah. Uh, if I can't prove it through the piggy bank itself, then I must find another way. What should be examined further to help us ascertain the authenticity of the weapon? Francisca, I think you were too quick to jump to your conclusions. Oh, was I? Yes, we don't even have the autopsy results yet. How can I not say that you made a snap judgment when you have yet to even see if the wound on Agent Hicks's head is consistent with the murder weapon? Scruffy! Yes, sir. Contact the medical examiner's office at once. I wish to hear the results of Agent Hicks's autopsy. Eh, yes, sir. We've got a big problem, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. What is it, Detective? They're still doing the autopsy, but they said that they already know this one thing for sure. Report! Now! The doc said that it's one giant bruise from a beating from his shoulder down to his mid-back. From the victim's shoulder to his mid-back, he was beaten over such a wide area. Well, I'd say maybe it's a sign the killer had a grudge against Agent Hicks. It wasn't just his head. The killer went all out and hit him multiple times, sir. Scruffy, what is had a grudge against Agent Hicks supposed to mean? I, well, that's, um... Was the wound on the victim's head consistent with the murder weapon, detective? Oh, well, they said they were still looking into that, sir. You're completely useless! Yeah. Sir, I told you already, you can't go down there! No, you remove yourself from my way! What is all that racket? Oh, it's this dude. My luggage! My cargo! They're mine and I demand you return them to me! We're still investigating the cargo hold! Please understand and have a little patience! I suppose there is no choice. Finally! I think he gave- Hey, what are you? You have left me no choice but to use strong force. Ah! You won't get past me. This is- Wait, that's it. So that's what this whole thing has been about. Further, there is a matter of the key to the display case that held the murderous bank. After all, you know that we've searched the entire cargo hold and came up empty-handed. The doc said that it's one giant bruise from a beating from his shoulder down to his mid-back. Damn it. I can't see a clear connection. Oh, come on. Were they smuggling iFly piggy banks? Oh, come on. They could have been hiding stuff in there. Oh, why are you doing me like this? All right, cause of death, bam. Thank you. Allegedly, the killer struck the victim many times over, which is why there is extensive bruising over such a wide area. But is that really the correct conclusion to draw from the evidence? The bruise from his shoulder to the middle of his back is one continuous mark, which is more suggestive of a single blow to the back. If that's the case, then the piggyback is much too small to have caused that. Therefore, the murder weapon must be something far bigger. Ooh. A sizable weapon. 
Weapon couldn't be found. Sizable weapon. Let's go. Connect these thoughts. Thank you. Oh, I'm so good. If we're looking for a rather large weapon, you'd think it would stick out. But so far, we haven't found anything that resembles a weapon of any sort. Perhaps, just perhaps, it's something we all overlooked from the very beginning. Because normally, it's too impossibly big to be taken into consideration. What was that all about? Was he trying to jump his way down here? Francisca! V what? What do you want? I found it, Francisca. I found the real murder weapon. You did? He... he really jumped. We didn't realize it until now, but the answer has been right in front of us this whole time. He might be hurt. We should go check up on him, sirs. There's that pompous attitude of yours again. You should learn to drop that habit. This coming from a prosecutor with a habit of whipping everyone she comes across. Anyway, if you really are prosecutors and you'll back yourself up with his, with his evidence. You two aren't listening at all, are you? Come on, Zen, show me this real murder weapon you speak of. I have evidence. Evidently. This is the real murder weapon. The real murder weapon is... It's that giant African thing. No, it's not. Or whatever tribal thing. I believe it's the suitcase. The real weapon is this suitcase. When you say it with such confidence, I suppose you must have some evidence? Of course. Agent Hicks was placed into this suitcase alive. And it was while he was in here that he was beaten in the head and ba- ah! I wonder if you would die if I whipped you from head to toe right now. What are you thinking, woman? Of course I would. I need to think about the circumstances of the victim's death in a different way. There's a wide bruise running from the victim's shoulder down to his mid-back. Maybe I should be focusing on what could cause such a large bruise in one strike. Oh my god. I have evidence. You'll see. I don't have evidence. I have no evidence. Take that. I have concluded that this is the real weapon, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> what is that supposed to mean, you fool? That was practiced just now for when I would show you the real murder <laughs> Why don't we add practice vippings to your routine as well? Ah. I literally don't understand. Just focusing on what could cause such a large bruise in the first place. We gotta save. I have to save the game. I don't have evidence to show. Hmm. I don't have any evidence to show you. Foolish reasoning for a foolish fool from a foolishly foolish fool meant to fool me? <laughs> what do you mean by I don't have any evidence to show? Perhaps I should have phrased it as that which caused Agent Hicks's death is incorporeal. Forgive me, but I do believe I have figured out what was the real cause of death. Free fall! The victim fell from a great height and subsequently died as a result. In other words, the real cause of death is free-falling to the ground. He... F fell to his death? Yes, this is the only plausible possibility. The victim has extensive bruising on the back of his head and back. And the only rational explanation for these injuries is that he fell to his death. But the murder happened inside this plane! I know. Are you claiming that there is some place in this plane from which he could have fallen from? As I said earlier, the answer has been right in front of us the entire time. 
You... you can't mean... Yes, I do. The victim fell from the top of the stairs of this very cargo hold. What? Then... then... We're in trouble. We may have a second death on our hands, sirs. Hey, you! Tell me you aren't dead, pal. Quiet! Why are you screaming? He's alive. And there you have it, Miles Edgeworth. It's not possible that Agent Hicks fell over the railing to his death. That man is living proof of that. I suppose it's true that it's not possible, given the current circumstances. The current circumstances? What is that supposed to mean? Suppose that large piece of cargo wasn't there at the time. What would have happened then? He would have been a Borginian pancake for sure, sir. I suppose that man over there wouldn't still be breathing. But the reality is that the cargo box is there. So there is no point in entertaining your wild hypothetical scenarios. It may be there now, but there is no proof that it was always there. Ha! As if there could have been a window of time when that giant box was not there. Ah, but there was. What? What can I use to show her that it's possible the box was not always where it is now? Dude, can I check? That's the railing! This is of inside the plane! Doesn't this show sufficient probability to you? V why are you asking me? I was the one asking you! I think there's some possibility in that, sir! No one was asking for opinions from the instant noodle crowd, Scruffy! I suppose this is where the phrase, to be whipped by one's opponent, came from. Don't act as though you have nothing to do with this! Now answer the question! I suppose she's right, but first I should recon- So it's not that? Um... <laughs> Refueling in Zhang Fei. Let me look at this. Made a brief stop to transfer cargo! Bam! Gotcha! You refueled in the Republic of Zhang Fei? Yes, this flight had a short layover in Zhang Fei in order to refuel. But that wasn't the only reason for the layover. We also transferred some cargo. What if the box in question was only transferred onto the plane at that time? To further prove my point, let's take a look at what's next to the box in question. Ah, it's labeled Zhang Fei Express. Correct, meaning it was loaded onto the plane in Zhang Fei. Now, what if the box in question was also loaded on at the same time? It would mean that the box was not here in the cargo hold during the Europe Zhang Fei leg of the flight making a clear drop from which Agent Hicks could have fallen to his death entirely possible. Ah, but your theory is still very far-fetched. Then, al then allow me a chance to prove how very likely my scenario is. My first order of business will be to examine that piece of cargo in more detail. Uh, yes. We need to have it moved, because there should be, like, blood underneath it or something. Hmm. This is a rather large piece of cargo. There's a tag on it, sir. Let's see, Aleph Red statue? Never heard of it. Nor I, but all I care about is if we can prove it wasn't here at the time of the crime. Then let's get investigating, sir. Look here, do not go about touching my possessions without my permission. Ah, d don't rush up on me like that, pal. So this belongs to Mr. LeBlanc, does it? I should see what else I can find out from him. Uh, I was trying to talk to you. I take it that this large piece of cargo belongs to you, Mr. LeBlanc? Of course it is mine! I shipped this fine piece of art from Europe! This Alif Red statue is worth 10 million cents! No, maybe much, much more! Hmm, Mr. LeBlanc's reason for choosing this plane must have been the large cargo hold. 10 million cents? I suggest you stop trying to calculate how many packets of noodles that makes, Detective. Darn, how did you do that? I feel like you keep getting better and better at seeing right through me every year. 
Though I grow with each revolution of the planet around the sun, I have the distinct impression he continues to madly spin in place. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, so that 10 million cents, is that in euros or in dollars? Does it really make a difference to our case? Mr. LeBlanc, there is a chance that your cargo is related to our murder case. I was wondering if you would allow us to examine it a bit closer. It is a very valuable piece of art, so no, there will be no touching! Is it this? Why do you show me something of no value? Alright. Wait, he wants me to pay him before he'll comment on this? Huh. Hmm. I showed you- you had nothing to say about this cloth. Oh, okay, there we go. What a waste! How horrible to see a priceless piece of cloth soiled! I assure you it wasn't me. I believe it to be the work of the killer. I will teach that killer a lesson! You can be sure I will! It will be the LeBlanc Revolution! I think he meant the LeBlanc Retribution, but either way, it sounds intimidating. Come on now, I'm running out of influence gauge here. Nice. If Mr. LeBlanc has something to do with the smuggling ring, then it's possible this fake statue was brought on board in Zhang Fei. Fake statue? I think I need to question him a bit further. About your statue, Mr. LeBlanc, I wonder if it might be a fake. What? How dare you say my art is fake? I suspect that your statue might be the target of an international smuggling ring. Don't say such fantastical things! Those thieves would not dare! I have the certification of my cargo right here! Do you mean the cargo certification document? Mr. Zinc LeBlanc, why didn't you say so earlier? Please show it to us at once! I can't read this. What does it say? It, it says as plain as day, the cargo was put onto the plane in Europe. And there you have it, Miles Edgeworth. Too bad for you. This statue was brought on board in Europe, just as it states in this certificate. No, that's... Which means that there never was a window of time in which the statue wasn't sitting there. I respectfully disagree. We can't discount the theory until I see the statue for myself. Hm, then you can have your wish. Look at it yourself and see I am right. It is that, I knew it. This, I know I've seen this somewhere before. This is the Alif Red? It gives off such a feeling of art, I can practically smell it. This statue has a high amount of historic value. After it was unveiled at a museum in Europe, I brought it to this country to exhibit it. I believe a closer look is warranted here. Oh, it's got glass on it? Or it's in glass? So, this is the infamous Alif Red statue, hmm? What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Did you find something? There's something wrong with this picture. We should examine it in more detail. Show me this picture. Okay, that... is... has red eyes. Yeah, it's called the Alif Red for a reason, and this thing doesn't have red eyes. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? You're goddamn right it is. Okay, yeah. So this picture is not of him in the plane, it's of him at the exhibit where this thing was shown. Alright. Give me that Eureka, cuz. These eyes are awfully orange, don't you think? Yeah, and pretty. They remind me of sunsets when I was in grade school, sir. I don't think you see what I'm talking about. No, I do. But it's really like the color of the sun when it's setting, sir. Ah, the memories. I remember standing out in that field, spinning with my arms out until I felt ill. I don't care about sunsets. Focus, detective. What color are the eyes in this photo? Huh? 
Ah, sir, they're red! As I thought, this statue is a fake. Mr. LeBlanc, what do you want? Do you not know I am a busy man? I allow you two seconds for your answer. The Alif Red. I suppose this is your pride and joy, is it not? It is the biggest trophy on this European trip. Do you know why I wanted to possess this statue? The trigger started 17 years ago. Better grab a chair, sir. Sounds like this is going to be a long story. Mr. LeBlanc, I regret to inform you, and you have my heartfelt sympathy, but... What is that? Sympathy? For what? You'll see. I'd like you to compare the eyes. That large fellow there is very bright and pretty eyes compared to you. I wasn't talking about the two of us. I meant the eyes of the statue in front of us and the one in this photo. Why the sudden yelling? Now that... Oh! It is a photo of the statue on display at the museum in Europe. No! Now do you see, Mr. LeBlanc? The statue before us is a fake. A... Uh, a fake! I believe that even further examination will be required, now that we have confirmed that this is indeed a fake. There must be some sort of proof that this was brought on board in Zhengfei, and I will present to you evidence that will resolve the remaining contradiction. I can't believe you were able to tell this was a fake from a single glance, sir. You knew right away that its eyes were a different color than the ones in the photo. Yes, unlike a certain detective who needs to try a little harder. The fact that this is a fake means it was swapped with the real one at some point. So this Alif Red is a fake. That art dealer isn't looking too happy about it either, sir. I will get to the bottom of this for his sake as well as mine. What else do you want me to examine here? What have we here? It says Zhengfei Express. It says Zhengfei Express on the cloth, sir. Something is tugging on the corner of my mind, as though something is out of place. I don't know what it would be. Like, I don't know what else there is to say about this, because we check this. It's red. This is not in glass, but I guess the glass is just for transport, you would think. So that doesn't actually matter that much. It's got a nose and a mouth. This looks, uh, you know, similar enough. Oh, we can scroll down. Thank you. Hmm. What's this? It's, the statue looks like it's stepping all over its neighbor's cloth cover. It kind of resembles its owner's attitude in a sense. Oh, oh. you! What did you said now? Further, my clothing's hem is not being stepped on by anyone. It is too expensive for me to allow that to happen. Please forgive the trespasses of my subordinate. Why should I forgive if the dress passes? Unless it is an expensive dress, you keep it! It's fake, same thing. The leftover suitcases sit here, lined up in two pretty neat rows. Too bad for Miss Tenero, but this design is unmarketable. Oh, why don't they sell them in the airport and have a bargain basement sale? Buy one, get one free. If you win the raffle, you get one more for free. How about those ideas, sir? I think if they did that, everyone would lose. What else am I meant to be examining? This is important. This is what we need to deduce. This um, thing is what says Zhang Fei on it. it says Zhang Fei Express in the cloth, sir. 
So this is out of place. I think we deduce this and we use um, that thing that he just gave me, the uh, Alif Red Certificate. Yes! What? Huh. Okay, maybe uh, we have to do the one on the left instead. We do that from here and deduce and then use that. Has to be. Has to be. Come on, it's gotta be. Now with a symbol on 10 million. Oh my god. Alright, we have to save because now I'm gonna like fail anytime I get something wrong. I don't understand what the problem is. Let me look at this damn organizer again. Why does it have to be like this? Check. Yes, examine. Jewels in the eye sockets, they were made to look just like real gems. So you mean, these aren't real? Do you really think the Forgers would waste that kind of money on a replica? I guess not. Oh, I just got a really great idea. I can probably find some rocks down by the river I can polish up to look like real jewels. I think I'll try that out and give one to Maggie as a present next time. I wonder if he's serious, and I wonder if I should try to stop him if he is. That's all we had to examine at first. Turn it around. Nothing. Turn it around some more. Nothing. Nothing on the floor. and nothing on the head. Well, what am I meant to do with that? Document written in Virginian proof the statue was loaded on board in Europe. Okay. blood on this cloth would have been in the suitcase why would there be blood on this cloth that's not even what's important here I legitimately don't know what's happening obviously I have to do something else hell if I know what though Like, this seems to be the important thing. Like, this seems to be the con the contradiction. It says, Zengfei Express on the cloth. So something is out of place. What would be out of place? You goddamn right it's connected. I've never been more sure of anything in my life. It's not that, by the way. Or that. Do, 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 do. Well, that did not work at all. Load. Let's try that again. I... Why? Why do you do this to me? It has to be this cloth. Maybe it's connected to the only other piece of evidence that has Zheng Fei in it. Damn! Damn you all to heck! 
Perhaps. No, not... Not that. Okay, we got this from the cargo hold. Indeed. Bloody cloth is found inside. Indeed. Borginian cloth. Beautiful plaid. Indeed. Not suitcase receipt. Not autopsy report. Not that. 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 I already, I already tried this. I don't know why it would be that. It wouldn't be that. That's exactly the point. But so I don't understand what the actual problem here is. I've deduced everything. Don't make me go into my organizer again. Prove the statue was loaded on board in Europe. So, the statue was loaded on board in Europe. The real one, that is. Right? Because the real one was loaded on board in Europe. Or was it not? Because this is fake. But the real one is in this picture. It was taken at a museum in Europe. Then it was unloaded onto the plane. Was it always fake? Like, did they steal it in Europe? Or did, was it real? And then they stole it during the travel between uh, Zhangfei and Europe. Or, like, when they refueled in Zhengfei. <sighs> that was taken to the museum in Europe. That's what I don't understand. Why is the cell phone missing? Why is the cell phone missing? Why is it missing? It was loaded on board during the refueling between 4 and 5 at the transfer point. Between 4 and 5. Mr. Agby Hicks was there in his seat when we took off again at 5 a.m. Well, that's completely false. So, we know that for a fact, at least, but that's not coming up yet. Oh, I... It's fake, yeah. I'll get to the bottom of this, sure. You sure will. Stepping on it, yeah. Doesn't seem to have anything to do with anything. Why does this contradict? Zengfei Express on the cloth. Yeah, that's that. And then this is next to that. So this something is out of place. What is out of place? is that's gonna do it for this episode i'll come into it fresh and we'll be we'll be great or i'll just read a comment someone will tell me what it is that would be great um i hope you enjoyed the episode like share and subscribe follow me on twitter at sunburn and i'll see you guys next time